Today we are going to discuss about something much more obvious and much more simpler. It is the that is devastating. That's right. Climate change is here. From melting polar ice caps to pollution from industries, power stations, increasing waste accumulation, almost every single type of waste and pollution and pollutants from that. This is spreading from that. Plus increasing population. Yes, these are the problems. But the main originator, that's right, global warming. Pollution and population may be the side and answer. What is global warming? The rise in global temperature of Earth. This diagram sums it up best as to how the effect happens. It's really not cool. The greenhouse effect is what takes place and the gases in the belt absorb the Earth's reflected radiation. Over time, this will cause severe consequences. Sea levels will rise gradually and every populous coastal city out there, places below MSL and island nations will be submerged underwater. So all those beaches, fun time drinks, sands between your toes, seashells searching, all will be washed away. Let's say that we did manage to build homes on water and somehow floated. But how do we deal with this? Bacteria and microbes. Global warming will raise the average temperature in tropical, subtropic countries and the rest is doomsday at microscopic level. So almost every disease-causing and flesh-eating bacteria, the vectors, microbes, germs will thrive and will be present in every corner of you and your surroundings. So like I say, there's absolutely no need of any crisis or a nuclear war or things that are happening right now. But global warming, if not checked, will gradually cause extinction of at least a significant portion of humanity. Let's take a look at the main greenhouse gases. First, we have the NTO, nitrous oxide. That's right, laughing gas. Then we have CFCs. These guys hit us in two places with one punch. First, the warming of Earth and second, screwing up the ozone layer. But the main culprit leader is CO2. This guy has 80% stake in screwing up Earth. Now this guy comes from almost every sources, man-made and natural. So it's all there. Now remember, global warming is actually an essential process for sustaining life on Earth. Without it, our Earth would be just a snowball. And I'm not talking about this ice age period, literally fully covered with ice. A sidebar, why don't you tell me the difference between ice and snow in the comments? Now, coming back, while we have our motors of go green, save the planet, eat healthy, manage waste, recycle, reuse, a realistic approach which actually will interest and benefit the oil companies and general people both is this method. That's right. Carbon sequestration. Now, from this diagram you can see, we actually literally capture CO2 from the emissions and inject it in any liquefied or vapor form deep underground in the following three locations which accept it. Now, there are obviously some roadblocks, as there always are. The capture and handling and transporting it in the pipes is a very arduous task, and also the cost of electricity needed to process this process is sky high. And if nature decides to throw up, there are dangers of leakage into sea rich of marine life and on land, similarly. CO2 will somehow creep through the gaps and somehow crash the party of the fish. So this will affect the lifespan, their breeding and spawning activities and somehow screw up every single thing. So let's take a look at the countries who actually utilize this process. Canada. Canada captures CO2 and injects it into a liquefied form into oil fields which further improves their oil recovery. So that's their plan. Now moving further north and towards the west side, we have the stations injecting CO2 into aquifers. Countries like Norway and Finland deep into the sea. Again, there are threats and dangers of this task. Again, leaks due to calamities will severely affect the habitats of flora and fauna excessively both underwater, in the seas and on land. So yeah, CO2 will literally fart on the surface. And again, on a more serious note, we need to cut down CO2 emissions as soon as possible because soon it will create a havoc. Now maybe if we somehow use combination of solar power to aid in the sequestration method, maybe that could even uh, boost our productivity. But again, that's if we still need to enhance the solar efficiency. And using wind energy is again seasonal. I mean, so that's how we need to shape the instruments and set up the machines. Or in the long run, again, this is the ultimate dream, building a Dyson sphere. It's a long way because we are not even a type 1 civilization as of now. That's what we have right now.